and we need to answer whether there is something that we should impose upon the system to make this summation convergent. Now, one thing is clear, if this summation converges, so let us see, if this summation converges, then we have a very interesting, in fact we have done what we wanted to. When we given a complex exponential of frequency omega, angular frequency of normalized angular frequency omega to a system, what we get out is the same complex exponential, but multiplied by a complex constant there is no other change. That means, each complex exponential is dealt with in a decoupled way. So, now if I have a sum of complex exponentials, of course, it is a minor, it is a very simple thing to see that if I, multi I can multiply both sides by any complex number here. So, I can multiply, you know, let me in fact rewrite this. So, if I take a times e raise to the power j omega n and give it to the same LSI system, I would of course, get a h omega e raise to the power j omega n, a is any complex number. Provided h omega converges, that is the million dollar question, when would it converge? But at least you know it is it's soothing to see that provided we have convergence, we have got what we wanted. If I have a linear combination of complex exponentials with different angular frequencies, what is going to emerge is the output to each of these complex exponentials treated independently and the output to each of these complex exponentials is going to be the same complex exponential multiplied by an appropriate constant, which depends only on the angular frequency. Of course, it depends on the impulse response, but since the system is the same, the response is the same for that angular frequency. So, we have got where we, where we want it, with the only catch that we do not know when this would converge. Can we guarantee that this summation converges all the time? Now, to check convergence, let us explore the expression itself. In fact, convergence ultimately has to do with the magnitude, the phase is irrelevant. So, let us look at the magnitude of h omega. The magnitude of h omega is obviously the magnitude of h k e raise to the power minus j omega k. And this is obviously less than or equal to the sum of the magnitudes. That is, you see the modulus of A plus B is always less than or equal to the modulus of A plus the modulus of B. And you can keep extending this to an infinite summation. This is less than or equal to the modulus of H k times the modulus of E raise to the power minus j omega k. But of course, the modulus of E raise to the power minus j omega k is obviously 1 and therefore, the modulus of h omega is less than equal to summation k going from minus to plus infinity mod h k. So, we have what we clearly see is a sufficient condition The sufficient condition is that this is finite. So, it means if the impulse response sequence is absolutely summable, absolutely summable means the sum of the absolute value of the samples is finite. If the, if the impulse response is absolutely summable, then we shall make a remark.
then the output to a complex exponential of phase a converges for any angular frequency. You see there are, please note that this condition is sufficient. The way we have proved it, we have only proved sufficiency and in fact, it is indeed just sufficient. The fact that it is only sufficient is a very subtle point, we will understand that better later. But we need to appreciate the meaning of this condition a little better. Mathematically, of course, we see it. It is an absolute sum, it is a sum of absolute values. Yes, there is a question. Yes. So, the question is in this page here, how did I conclude? No, no, what I am saying is if I want, I, I, what I have shown is that mod h omega is less than or equal to this absolute sum here. So, I am saying a sufficient condition for this to converge is that this is finite. So, this is a sufficient condition. I am not saying that this is necessarily finite, but if this is finite, then this converges, that is what I am saying. So, as I was saying, we need to now answer what is the physical interpretation, what do we mean by this being absolutely summable. And in fact, we will get a hint if we only look at the general convolution expression once again. We shall do that and we shall carry on the discussion in this and the next lecture. So, let us take that LSI system with a general input. We have x n, we have the same impulse response h n, we are asking what does the fact that and we of course, we have been told that this is true given. So, of course, we know what y n is. Of course, y n is summation k from minus to plus infinity x k h n minus k, but now you will agree with me that I can also write this down as h k x n minus k, because convolution is commutative. So, let us take the modulus of y n, modulus of y n is the modulus of summation k going from minus to plus infinity h k x n minus k. And of course, this is less than or equal to summation k from minus to plus infinity mod h k mod x n minus k. As usual, because mod a plus b is less than or equal to mod a plus mod now, now let us look back at this. You see here, suppose we manage to put a bound on this. Bound means we put a supremum on it. Supremum means we identify a finite non-negative number, such that none of these magnitudes can be more than that number. In other words, let us assume that mod x n is less than or equal to some m x, where m x is a quantity greater than or equal to 0 for all n. In other words, the input is bounded. We say this is the terminology that we use. We say the input is bounded by m x. Obviously, the output is also bounded now. Mod y n is clearly then less than or equal to m x times 
summation k going from minus to plus infinity mod h k. And if this is finite, the output is also bounded. And in fact, here too we have what is called a constructive proof, not just an existential proof. So, what we have shown is that if that condition absolute summability of the impulse response is satisfied, then a bounded input results in a bounded output. That is a serious conclusion. And not only have we concluded that, we have also shown what the bound, what the output bound is. That is what I mean by constructive. You can calculate the output bound, at, or at least you can calculate a one output bound from the input bound. Could be better. Now, this leads us to one more property that may or may not be possible in systems, in LSI systems and that is called the property of stability. In fact, we define in the next lecture the idea of stability in terms of inputs and outputs being bounded. There are different notions of stability and we shall talk more about these notions and the connection to the impulse response in the next lecture. Thank you.